Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. Is there a limit to the number of sets you can perform for a muscle group per session? A brand new analysis involving 35 studies with over 1,000 subjects helps answer this question. Let's dive in. Of course, we're not talking about warm-up sets, rather sets that involve taking your reps to or close to failure. Here's the variables behind the studies. On average, there were 10 reps per set, and most sets were taken to failure. The analysis examined the relationship between the number of sets performed per muscle group each session and hypertrophy. But how do we count sets per muscle group each session? The researchers compared three different methods to see if there was a best. Feel free to skip ahead if you're familiar with these since we covered these in prior videos. But if you need a refresher or if this is new to you, it's worth understanding this. The differences lie in how they count direct and indirect sets. A direct set for a muscle is where it's the primary force generator. Think of the biceps in any curl, the triceps in any triceps extension, and the chest in typical bench pressing. An indirect set for a muscle is one where it's somewhat trained, but not primarily, such as the biceps during a row and the triceps during wider grip bench pressing. Here's what the authors considered as direct and indirect sets for each muscle group. Not every muscle group or exercise is shown as these are just the ones involved in the data. The total method simply counts each direct set as one and each indirect set as one. The direct only method counts each direct set as one and does not count indirect sets at all. The fractional method counts each direct set as one and each indirect set as half a set. You could argue an indirect set should be a bit less or a bit more than half a set in different scenarios, but to keep things simple, the researchers stuck with half a set in all cases. Even with this arguable imperfection, it was found the fractional method tended to be better than the direct and total methods, which is pretty logical. Indirect sets still stimulate the muscle to some degree, so we want to count them. But they don't stimulate the muscle as well as direct sets, so we don't want to count them equally to direct sets. So unless otherwise noted, all the set numbers in this video are calculated with the fractional method. Here was the relationship between sets per muscle group each session and growth, showing that higher sets generally produce more growth, with no clear sign of a plateau. That said, there were diminishing returns. Each additional set produces more growth, but the amount of extra growth decreased with each added set. If, for whatever reason, you dislike the fractional method of counting sets, you may be interested to see these graphs displaying the findings with the total and direct only methods. Moderator analyses showed a similar relationship when focusing on either untrained or trained individuals, as well as when focusing on either using shorter or longer rest between sets. This analysis on rest time between sets is quite interesting, as at the House of Hypertrophy, we've previously discussed the possibility that set numbers and rest time between sets interact with each other, but it's apparent the most recent evidence does not support this. If you're curious about the full details behind this and my latest thoughts, you'll find it in the pinned comment. These results may surprise many. The line shows increasing gains up to 20 plus sets per muscle group each session, there are some good points that help contextualize these findings that we'll examine shortly. Generally, these results align with the latest analyses on the relationship between sets performed per muscle group per week and hypertrophy, as well as the relationship between training frequency and hypertrophy. We can see that more sets for a muscle group in a week is also associated with more hypertrophy. If this plateaued at a low number of sets, we shouldn't expect higher sets in a single session to be beneficial so it makes sense that more weekly sets generally causes more hypertrophy. As for frequency, this analysis answers the question, when the total sets per muscle group each week is kept constant, does spreading that volume across more days per week lead to better hypertrophy? For example, if we perform 12 weekly sets all to failure for the biceps, is it better to perform it all in one session, spread across two days, three days, or even more days? Of course, spreading the volume across more days permits fresher sets, but does it matter? According to the results, not really. All frequencies produce similar growth. Numerically, a once per week frequency did produce lower growth, but the differences did not exceed typical error. We'll return to this point later. This aligns with the new data on sets per session in that if we observed a plateau in growth at very low set numbers, higher frequency should be better. 
For example, if muscle growth plateaued at three sets per muscle group in a session, but there was still a benefit to training with more than three weekly sets per muscle group, then more training sessions in a week would be better. So, the fact that muscle growth does not plateau at low set numbers per session and that we see no real effect of training frequency makes sense. Taking a closer look at the volume analyses, is it really true that upwards of 30 weekly sets for each muscle group maximizes hypertrophy? Not necessarily. Although both analyses show numerically more growth up to the highest set numbers, using a specific statistical-based criterion of the researcher's choice, they determined 11 sets per session was the point where there was simply greater uncertainty about more being beneficial, while this was 31 sets for the weekly set analysis. The credible intervals get wider at higher set numbers, further pointing towards greater uncertainty, and we can see there's simply not as many studies examining very high set numbers. Understanding the details of the individual studies behind this analysis also puts the findings into context. This is a point I probably should have done a better job at emphasizing in previous videos, but upon reviewing the individual papers, a fair number of studies use what I'd call incomplete programs, where only one or a handful of muscle groups are trained. Most studies involved training to failure, but the studies vary in their definitions of failure, so I can't rule out that some studies involved subjects training insufficiently hard. The average duration of a study was around 10 weeks. There was a moderator analysis finding that the relationship between sets and hypertrophy remained when looking at longer duration studies, but as the researchers describe, the moderator analyses should be viewed with a lot of caution as there's not many data points behind them. It's also plausible that over the very long term, moderate volumes ultimately get you to the same place as higher volumes. For these reasons, I'm not truly confident that super high volumes are superior. This doesn't mean the data is useless, because it still convincingly emphasizes diminishing returns and how low volumes can still build muscle, but probably won't be optimal for most people. All in all, when considering these findings and the fatigue research, I'm fairly confident that even in the context of a complete training program where all sets are taken to or close to failure, moderate volumes will be superior to lower volumes. Here's my general recommendation that regular viewers may be familiar with. Maximize training quality first. Select exercises that sufficiently train a muscle and then ensure you train sufficiently hard per set. We have videos at the House of Hypertrophy that can assist you. Then, I would perform as much as you can practically and consistently. For most, I think this will fall around 10 to 20 weekly sets per muscle group. This is not a hard cutoff, and this is very much a broad range. But the reason for this is I suspect there is variability. Some people or even some muscles you have may thrive on the lower end, while other people or other muscles you have may thrive on the higher end. If you wish to experiment with even higher volumes, I would not at all object to that. One feasible way to do this for most people is with muscle group specialization, where you lower the number of sets for all your other muscle groups while increasing the number of sets for a few or even just one muscle group. Taking a closer look at frequency, we know that analysis indicates that when the total number of weekly sets is kept constant, how often you choose to train a muscle group in a week doesn't seem to really matter. So you're free to train with whatever split, whether a lower frequency one with something like a bro split, a two times per week frequency with something like a typical upper and lower split, or even something that involves higher frequency like a full body split. Of course, there are different variations of these splits and even hybrid splits. And although convenient, it's not essential to confine training splits to the seven days of a week. Having said all that, the sets per session analysis does show greatly diminished returns above 11 sets. So you may be wondering if you're training with more than 11 weekly sets for a muscle group, perhaps a once per week frequency is going to be inferior. I think this is potentially true. Recall, although the differences did not exceed typical error, a once per week frequency did produce numerically lower growth. 13 weekly sets per muscle group was the average in the data. If the average was higher, perhaps we'd see stronger evidence of once per week being inferior. There was an analysis that still suggested no clear effect of frequency when separating out studies using higher or lower weekly volumes. But importantly, there aren't actually a ton of studies directly comparing different frequencies with higher weekly set numbers. I could be wrong, but I think as we get higher quality studies that include higher weekly volumes, we'll more compellingly see a once per week frequency not being as good. For these reasons, nowadays I would recommend a frequency of at least two times per week particularly when training with moderate-ish to higher weekly sets. 
If you're someone who prefers a once per week frequency, it's clear you can still build muscle with this, so stay with that. If you're looking for an exceedingly effective customized muscle building program, our exceptionally rated partner, the Alpha Progression app, can help you. No other app gets close to creating personalized programs as comprehensive and well-rounded. Input key details, such as what equipment you have, if you want to emphasize some muscles more than others, and how often and how long you're able to train for. This generally takes less than a minute. The training philosophy is based on the latest scientific literature, but further customizations can easily be done. Reorder, swap out, remove, or add exercises. Change any training variable or add things such as supersets. During workouts, there's a built-in warm-up set calculator and rest interval timer. Track each set with the app, and the app also provides progressive overload recommendations to assist you. And there's a nice workout summary at the end. Of course, the app automatically logs and displays your progression across time. If you're unsure about exercise technique, there are straightforward video and text instructions on over 600 exercises. The reviews from tens of thousands is a testament to its exceptional quality, but we would love to know what you think. The link in the comments and description gives you a free 2-week trial plus 20% off a subscription if you do continue. The researchers also had an analysis on strength gains, which fascinatingly suggested strength gains were essentially maximized at around only two sets per muscle group per session. I intend to have a series of videos where we'll expand on the research on training for strength versus size, so stay tuned. Also, in the pinned comment, I addressed the idea floating around social media that you want to perform as many first sets as possible in a week. The suggestion that the hypertrophy results are confounded by muscle swelling, and as alluded to earlier, further thoughts about the relationship between sets and rest interval durations. Thank you for making it to the end. Here's the summary points. 